Can you please just try to sum up what happened here in a couple sentences here right off the bat? Uh, yeah, you know, we were able to make some deals to get some extra picks, and uh, we're happy about that. I think it's always uh, the more picks you have, the better chance you have to get players. It's, uh, it's no, sure, no sure thing here with these amateur players, so the more you ha opportunities you have to get players, uh, the better chances to get players. Today you picked four defensemen, four forwards. A comment on that. I know we talk a lot about yeah. picking the best player. Is that the case again here today? Yeah, there was no plan at all as far as uh, positioning. Positioning, we just, uh, they were the players that were, uh, you know, we put them in groups and that's the best player at that time or the player that we feel most comfortable with at that time. So that's who we, we take. At the same time, this, this trend of stockpiling defensemen, this is two years in a row where you've drafted a bunch of defensemen. Uh, yeah, absolutely no plan. Last year we might have been looking a little bit more for defensemen. This year, absolutely no plan. It was, uh, um, you always try to get a balance, but it was like, uh, this is the player that, that we're most comfortable with at this point of the draft. Let's take him. So that's that's what we did. And it turned out that it was ended up 4-4. Four and four. Just as a summary of this group, I, I don't know how you would summarize this group right now, but putting them all together. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. You don't even get a chance to look at the whole thing. But, I mean, there's some size there for sure and uh, good mobility and, and good hockey sense. And that's, again, what we're looking for. The size was, is, is kind of a bonus, but uh, there was a lot of big boys there, so uh, we're, we're happy with that. And one other question, getting back to something you said earlier, getting more picks by trading down. Was that a plan coming in to try and acquire more assets? No, that, you can never really plan for it because basically you have to, somebody has to call you to, to, to want those picks to, to offer you. But you, you, you know, you don't really call a team to to say, you know, we'll give you this pick for, for two later picks, you know, because that's just not the way it works. So you, your phone has to ring, and our phone was ringing. Teams happened to want some of our picks, and uh, they were offering up some, some packages that we thought were uh, very, uh, you know, they were they were good. So that's why we, we did it. At the same time, you do increase your odds when you get... <laughs> and, and that's the bottom line. You increase your odds. Once you get past... Uh, well, any round, but you know, once you get past the first round, I think it's uh, you know definitely the more uh, the more the merrier. So, Tim, that's it. I mean, obviously a very busy day here. The next step, hustle back to Phoenix for the development camp. Last question: All these guys heading to the development camp. What are you expecting to see? Yeah, we're still working on it. Um, obviously, the kid, uh, the last guy from Sweden, there. He's gonna, it's going to be tough to get him in there for uh, tomorrow, but we're working on it, so we'll see. But yeah, we're just expecting. Uh, you know, it's just an opportunity development camp. Uh, it's not an evaluation process. It's just a chance for us to get a look at uh, some of these guys, get them acquainted to uh, Phoenix, to the organization, for us to get to know them, uh, them to get to know some of the other prospects. And uh, just uh, that's all we're looking at. And like I say, it's not, a, it's not a hard evaluation or anything like that.